The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 31st, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstances of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. But if you've got a question and you can't call in, I've got your back. Send me an email, send it off early, and send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside the Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We start our day with, well, a market that is rallying into the 2 p.m. Fed decision out there. You've got the Dow up 200 points, half percent. One and six tenths for the S&P, 89 points. Nearly 3% for the NASDAQ, 523 points. Six tenths for the Russell, 14 points there. 5% for the semis. That's a 250 point, 252 point move as we speak right now. Gold's up 16, silver's up 36 pennies, lights recruit up to 36. Natural gas off six cents, 30 year treasury print out at 120.29. That's up 23 ticks. Our leader in the clubhouse, the upside, I think we looked at this uh, maybe uh, when I was on the show on Monday. Asimil Holdings up 59 bucks, Monolithic Power Systems 49, MicroStrategy 49, Lamb Research 44, Powell Industries 39. KLA Corp up uh, 37. So we got some movers. We also have some shakers. Those shakers being led by Humana down 35 points. That's a 9% move. United Therapeutics 20 uh, bucks, nearly 6%. Verisk Analytics off 19 bucks, over 6%. Marriott is down 13 bucks, almost 6% there. And CDW Corp down 5%. That's a $12 move. So we got movers and we've got shakers. But let's begin our day with what? Well, let's begin our day with really kind of an interesting uh, set of markets out here. And so let me show you what we're going to be wanting to watch as we come to that two o'clock time frame. First, we're gonna take a look at that uh, perigee pivot point. That perigee pivot point, I think might have come in last Thursday, if I'm not mistaken, Thursday or Friday. And the, uh, then what that does is that sets up, what we do is we mark our charts with the exact price uh, when that uh, pivot point comes in. And in the case of the ES Mini, that was at 55.70. So that's going to be the first real key resistance level for the ES Mini. You'll want to watch that today as we come into 2 o'clock. You'll certainly want to watch that at session end. If price closes above 55.70 as we come into the end of the day out there, that's going to be very suggestive of a further rally. Otherwise, that is very likely where the counter trend move should end. If we take a look at the NQ, which has had a very substantial rally today, you can see it's well below that uh, perigee pivot point. That's at 19,768. So I'm not sure who's driving the bus here. Is it the ES Mini right now? It's the one that's in the lead out there, and that's what you're going to want to pay attention to. Now, the interesting thing about that and the 2 o'clock time frame when Powell comes out, and we'll go ahead and switch some charts here. And I also have to switch the screen, so my apology for the first screen that's going to pop up. But what we're going to go do is we're going to go take a look at the two-hour time frame. Just trying to whittle this down to the least amount of things that you need to be paying attention to as we come into the uh, into that two o'clock time frame, so that you can interpret what the message of the markets are. And if we take a look at these two-hour time frame charts, what you will see is the ES Mini 
is in bar number nine as we speak right now. Now, this bar is going to complete at 12 noon, so you're going to get a confirmed TD9 count top for the two-hour time frame for the ES Mini as it approaches that perigee pivot point at 55.70. It doesn't have to get right up to it. In fact, we got pretty darn close uh, during this uh, two-hour session as we speak right now. That also says, and you may recall this, that on a TD9 count pattern, the higher low, in this case here, we're talking about the high, uh, can take place on the bar following bar number nine. That would take us right smack dab into the 2 p.m. time frame. Now, the cool thing about that is whatever the high is, and I don't know what that high is going to be. I'm not saying that we're at the high of the day so far. But whatever that high is, and that's what you'll want to note on your ES mini charts, come 2 p.m., if price begins trading above that, and certainly at 4 p.m., if price closes above that high, it negates this TD9 count top. It first would tell us that price would go target the 56.17 level. That's based upon the two-hour time frame. That's based upon its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. I'm not saying price can't get above that. I'm just saying that would be the area to watch if, in fact, the two-hour TD9 count top and the ES mini fails. If our eyes gravitate over to the right-hand side, probably yours have already done that. Well, I was just, you know spitting things up here is the uh, in the case of the nq it's also in bar number nine that completes at 12 noon so just like the es mini it's going to go ahead and complete that pattern as we come to the two o'clock time frame i would not be surprised to see the markets continue to rally into that two o'clock time frame out there setting up those potential td9 count tops uh, for that, uh, for the 120 minute charts out there. Now, if the 120 minute chart for the NQ gets negated, the two hour price target would be all the way up at about 20,000, 19, 999.75 out there. So that would be another level for you to watch. Now, it's 11.12 in the morning out here, and it's very possible that at 12 noon, I don't know if that's the case or not, but it's very possible that the Dow Equity Future contract will negate its momentum indicator top that formed at 6 o'clock this morning. Well, it actually formed at, 10 at 8 o'clock this morning out there with that bearish engulfing candle. But if we do see at 12 noon a close above 41.153, that pattern gets negated, and that says that it should also rally into the 2 o'clock time frame. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, finally, having a decent move today, but still... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, folks. <coughs> we then the other three that we were taking a look at out here, and, and if you're asking me, do I have a good read on the two-hour time frame for the uh, Russell 2000 equity future contract? My answer to that would be no. So watch those three: the ES, the NQ, and the uh, Dow equity future contract. You got the 5570 level inside of the ES mini as its perigee pivot point, and quite frankly. We don't even need to go on today any further. Uh, that's going to be the areas to watch and the patterns to watch out there in order to be able to interpret what the message of the markets are. Now, we won't stop there. And, uh, in fact, I said I was struggling with regard to the Russell 2000, which I am, at least with regard to the two-hour time frame chart. But let's go ahead and take up the Russell 2000 and go take a look at the IWM. And let's do this for Hector. And Hector wanted to really take a look at the uh, A to B equals CD pattern on the uh, monthly time frame. We're actually going to take a look at it, Hector and Patty, on the daily, the weekly, and the monthly because they're all intermixed with each other out there. But first what I will do is I will start with the uh, three-panel IWM. WM chart since we're on this white background set of screens out here and we're about to go to a break. It's looking for any kind of topping patterns. You see the Rhodes Mentum indicator top on the daily time frame. You see a sell the D point top on the weekly time frame. The monthly time frame looks very bullish as you pointed out. But we'll finish taking a look at the IWM as soon as we get back from this break. <clears throat> If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we've got the uh, the daily, weekly, and monthly time frame charts for the IWM on our screen. What Hector was uh, pointing out this morning is we're at the end of the month, the yeah, month of July. And it's going to confirm on a weekly, on a monthly basis, a, a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. The swing point or the B point on this is the month from March of 2024, Hector. And the volume was uh, about 682 million shares. This month right now we're at 801. So that's a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the upside, which is really represented by the weekly chart. So in essence, the weekly chart, I'm using the A point of that uh, start of that monthly A to B equals CD. So everything here. So that gives you a one-to-one -one price projection of 241.55. 241.55 will get us back to the highs in November of 2021, the all-time highs out there for the IWM. So yes, it looks like you're going to get that confirmed A to B equals CD on the monthly basis, but we still have to step back for a moment and take a look at what all the charts are communicating to us. And that includes the monthly. So if we just simply take a look at from the all-time high inside the IWM, November 2021, and you know what? This is not exactly right. Let me, uh, I see that something must have shifted here. So let's put in that retracement level because I don't want to give you bad data. Certainly not intentionally, especially when I can see it. But if we take a look at, yeah, so I, I guess I was pretty close to using the exact same thing. So we can see that what Price has done here is it's made the 0.786 retracement of the move down. Again, that was the high from November of 2021 down to the low that came in in October of 2023. And we know we get to a 0.786 level. That's an elevator level and people are getting off. Maybe people are getting on to ride at the upside, but it does say be careful. And the reason why it says careful out there at the moment, Hector, is because if we look at the weekly chart, even though I show a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern here to 241, the daily chart shows you an A to B equals CD pattern that is along the C to D leg of that uh, weekly A, B, C, D pattern. Now, I might have just confused the heck out of everybody, including Stevie. So I'll say that again. If we take a look at the C point of the weekly A to B equals CD pattern, and I can actually just draw this in there. What you're going to see is this is going to match the daily sell the D point pattern that is already in place out there. And the weekly has the same 
uh, short term along that C to D leg confirm sell the D point top. And how it has that pattern, just going to go ahead and delete that, is you have a bearish shooting star out here from the week of July 15th. So Hector and Patty. The real key level of resistance on a weekly basis that price is going to need to close above to suggest that this larger monthly A to B equals C to pattern is going to come to fruition is going to require a close above 226.64. 226.74 happens to be the 0.786 retracement level. So let's just call that's the area that price would need to close above to suggest that the monthly A to B equals C to pattern is going to go ahead and come to fruition. On that um, daily time frame chart, you've got two sell the D point patterns. Not that that matters. You actually have a Rhodes Mentum indicator top as well out here. That's really the one that formed on the July 29th. So your resistance zone here is between 225.42 and 226.64. So yes, I'm in agreement with you. If we didn't take a look at retracements, if we didn't take a look at what's going on inside the C to D leg out there, uh, then we would just... Uh, Blindly say, yeah, we've got a confirmed A, B, C, D up pattern that would take us up towards that 244, 46 level. So you don't get there until we start to see the weekly and the daily sell the D point tops uh, fail out there. So Hector and Patty, I hope that that I hope I was clear and uh, I hope that that does answer your question. So as always, thanks so much for uh, your request. We had a request come in from Jambalaya and his question specifically is, is Microsoft a buy? So a very interesting question. If we take a look at the Microsoft chart, what we'll see today, what took place here, is Microsoft has made it to the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD price projection. Now, if price closed the day, so this is kind of interesting because, and I haven't actually even seen this before that I recall, not that I recall much, but if we take a look at the, uh, am I on the right chart? Nope, let me change, thank you. That might've been what you were talking about. Give me a moment. Oh, thank you, Al for being my wingman. Let me see if that's what you're, uh, yep, perfect, I love it, okay. So now we've got the uh, Microsoft charts up on our screen. You can see the A to B equals CD pattern, jambalaya and price got down to the one to one level. But if we, and, and this is what I have not seen before to know the answer to your question. I'm gonna give you what I believe, but uh, I haven't seen this pattern unfold. And that pattern is that you've got a nice uh, bullish piercing candle that formed on July 26. Now, price did not complete that A to B equals CD pattern at that stage. That is a level of support. And I would say that today, if price closes below the low of that candle, the low of that candle is 417.27. There's a close above 417.27. Then I would say you have an actual buy the confirmed by the T by the D point pattern. Typically, because of today's move, but it has not negated that uh, that uh, bullish piercing candle out there. I would say you need to see another bullish reversal candle to, con to confirm that by the D point pattern. However. I still think because price is now tested and so far rejected the breakout level and you get to a breakout level, that can be a bottom. So I believe that if Microsoft on the daily time frame can hold the low of that swing point from July 26, what you should at least get is a rally. Now that rally will take us up to levels of resistance. In this case here, the first level is 420.38. That's the bottom of its profile. If price, this, this could be day number one below the bottom of its profile. We know we need two days below the bottom of a profile to give us a profile change in trend signal out there. So if price is able to rally up and get above 42038, not today necessarily, then you would then see a move or should see a move up towards the 434, 439 level. We look at the weekly time frame chart. So that's the bullish side on the daily time frame. What's the bearish side? Well, first of all, the weekly time frame is bearish in that we have a TD9 count, Rhodes Mintum indicator topping signal out there with price trading below profile support. Looks like this will be the second week below that. And that suggests that Microsoft should target 404.51. However, and this is where, you know, take a look at these charts here. Some of them are giving us very different signals out there. Of course, there are different time frames. But we look at that monthly time frame, which will go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top today. Um, of course, we know that the high can come in the bar following bar number nine. And what's transpired here so far this month, Jam, is that prices pulled back and tested that green oscillator and change line. That's bullish. If we open up the monthly time frame chart, that's the beauty of that oscillator and change line. Well, I've got to incorporate these tools, in my opinion, for the multiple time frames so that you can get a clear message of the markets. Would you ever sell Microsoft if it has not closed below that green oscillator and change line? I mean, you might do it, uh, but you wouldn't have solid reasons, at least with regard to that tool, to go ahead and do that. 
And if we take a look at Microsoft, it has remained above that oscillator and change line. We did see one close below back in September of 2023. That's along the current leg that we're looking at. So support, even though you've got a topping pattern, I would have to go with a neutral signal at the moment on the monthly time frame for Microsoft. The weekly chart says I want to head lower, but that daily chart could easily get in the way and we could at least see a counter trend move. So you asked if it's a buy. I've given you you know the 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 bot the, the the scenario daily weekly and monthly and if giving you some resistance levels and so forth so hopefully that does answer your question with regard to microsoft we come back from this breakout here we're going to take a look at tesla that's for dan inside the den we'll take a look at soxs as well U for joe d slv for jambalaya oil for john c steve rhodes with tfnn i'll be right back annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until August 1st, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and they never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus from purchasing Tiger Dollars, now is your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until August 1st. So lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, folks. So we're going to take a look at the test list for Dan inside the Tigers. Then we'll look at it from an intraday basis as well as short term. Intraday, we've got the 30-minute time frame chart up on our screen, Dan. And what you'll notice is the uh, nice TD9 count bottom that completed at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That was back uh, yesterday. And that has led to a rally. It's taken uh, the rally right up to where we thought it would go, which was at the uh, 320, 330, 232, uh, 69 level. That's the TD9 count breakdown level. And we closed above it at 10 a.m., and then we got right back below it at 10.30. So that becomes your resistance. The actual resistance now is the top of its profile, 234.68. So you just got a consolidation. I don't see a top other than getting back to a breakdown resistance level, and that can be a top. So that's what's going on on the 30-minute time frame. Now, if we look at the daily, the weekly, and the monthly out here with regard to the daily time frame, you've got a TD9 count top that has formed. That's taken us into a buy the D point uh, pattern, a Gartley buy pattern that was confirmed with this uh, rising window back on July 29th out there. You can see the A to B and C to D uh, levels out here. So now what price is doing, though, Dan, it's taking on resistance, which is the top of its profile, the top of the daily profile for Tesla's 231.68. A price closed above 231.68, then we're likely to see a move up to 241.92. You get above 241.92, we're probably headed back to its size at 270 out there. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart has a sell the D point top that formed on July 19th. And that took price right back to support at 219.21. So the move to the downside after you form a top is just a test support. Support is held. It's a neutral signal overall, but it's it's neutral to bullish because support held. And on monthly time frame, it looks like Tesla's going to go ahead and generate a profile change in trend by closing of 214.60. So that's what I see when I take a look at the daily, weekly, monthly, and the 30-minute time frame chart for Tesla Dan. Hope that provided you with the information you were looking for. You also wanted to take a look at the S, the socks out here, S O X S. And we take a look at this. Uh, we can see a nice road momentum indicator bottom way back here on July the 11th. Then you can see the A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Today is actually the confirmation of that sell the D point pattern because you've got a bear separation candle. Uh, you know, quite uh, quite difference from yesterday's high, but that's the first confirmation of that sell the D point pattern. Now, what the SOXS should do is pull back to the 2412 level. That's the oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line just changed colors. If price moves there and holds, that would be a bullish signal for this chart out there, and that would suggest a further rally. On a weekly time frame, it has a nice TD9 count bottom pattern. But what we can see out here, and I think you're more interested in medium term, well, we can see it from a medium term standpoint, you've got that nice bottom, but we also see as resistance at that oscillator and change line, currently printed at 26.37. You really need to see it close above the 26.36, 37, 38 level, some, somewhere right around there, to suggest that you've got a further rally up to the 3150 level. So that's what we see when we take a look at the uh, SOXS medium term. Um, so I hope that that helps you out and provide you with the information that you were looking for as well. Joe D would like to take a look at, and you're, you're most welcome. Um, if we take a look at uh, U, ticker symbol U out there, God, you would think that I would know what that is off the top of my head. Um, but uh, Unity Software, I don't. Whoops, we're not at U. Sorry. Let's try that one more time. Now we are at Unity Software. And this is for Joe D. So, Joe, this has Roach Mintum Indicator Bottom. That uh, a pattern actually went in and confirmed on July 11th. But the low of that pattern is really the key area, and that's the July 9th low. And that number out there from a support standpoint is going to be 1516. Now, we had price come back into this swing point. That uh, swing point had volume. That's a July, uh, 20, not July 9th swing point of about 10 million shares. Price came back into it with 8 million shares. So price was coming back into that level with lighter volume. What is this thing doing? You know, we've got really kind of a consolidation, if you will, between resistance at the top of its daily profile at 1804 and support being that oscillator and change line, which is at 1572. So that's what I see here is just kind of a sideways-ish consolidation. It's really reflected in the weekly chart as well, which has a nice TD9 count bottom. And its resistance level is 1911. If price were able to close above 1911, Joe, then you'd be looking at a move up towards the 2550 uh, uh, 50 level over time. 
monthly chart isn't helping us. It's bearish, not bullish, or anything along those lines out there. So it's really going to be the daily and the weekly bottom that will control what this is doing out here. And on a daily time frame, it just, you know, you got a battle at 1644. You could have one at 1740 and another one at 1804, just like you could have a battle to the downside from a support standpoint at 1572. So that's what Stevie sees. We take a look at ticker symbol U. That is Unity software out there. And I thank you for your request. Jambalaya also wanted to take a look at the SLV. I would mentioned during the update that silver was breaking out because it was trading above the top of its daily profile. If we look at the SLV, we don't have those same types of profiles out there. So we wouldn't get that same breakout message, Jambalaya. I'll put the weekly chart. I'm sorry. I'll put the other daily. I'll put the daily chart for silver up on my screen. I'm going to switch screens out here so we can take a look. And this is, this is the underlying instrument. And this is the one that you would trade the SLV off. I'm not saying you have to trade the futures uh, for silver. But if you trade an SLV, you want to have access to this. And, of course, you'd like to have access to the market profiles as well. And here you can see you've got a new market profile, bullish in structure, formed yesterday. Question is, will we, uh, after a Powell statement, whatever that might be, uh, will we see price stay above and close above 28.74? If we do, and silver closes above that again tomorrow, then you would have a profile change in trend. Now, that profile change in trend should take us up to its descending trend line. Let me go. I don't think I have that turned on here, but I'm going to turn it on in a moment so that I don't have to draw that in. And here is where silver should rally up towards. Now, what is that price level? It's around 31, you know, and some change out there or so. It just depends on when we might get up to that level. So you do have a profile change in trend breakout signal. We'll need confirmation tomorrow, and certainly at day's end out there. And now if we switch back to the SLV charts, what you're going to see is you don't have that same message out there. So it's really important when you trade GLD, SLV, natural, uh, the uh, natural gas ETF, any of those ETFs out there is to understand the underlying instrument and what it is communicating to us. Because here, shoot, we're trading below profiles, right? We're trading into, in essence, what would be resistance. It's got a nice SLV, does have a nice TD9 count bottom, which, by the way, so does silver. Silver also has a buy the D point bottom that formed yesterday out there. So you do have the same bottoming pattern, but you don't have the same profiles to give you that same type of breakout information. In this case here, the SLB says that resistance would be up at the 2649 to 2655 level. What the SLB also suggests to us is that that should be a strong resistance level. And the reason is because both the center and the bottom are at that price point of 2655. But let's do this, Jambalaya. Let's take our P's and Q's from the September futures contract for silver. Let that be the guiding force as to where the SLV is likely headed to. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. 
with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're going to take a light sweet crude here. This is for John. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Inside the uh, Tiger's Den. So, John, on a monthly basis, you've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top with a consolidation with inside its profile. You've got support at 7175, resistance 8240. Of course, your real resistance level is the top of that Rhodes Mintum indicator uh, signal, and that's going to be at uh, 8436. That's a September contract. A close above that, and then oil gets into a full breakout mode. On a weekly time frame, you've got price that tested so far and rejected this week the bottom of its profile at 74.69. So maybe this suggests a rally up towards a 79.36 level. On a daily time frame, at a minimum, well, that's unless things just totally sell off after 2 o'clock, so it's a possibility. Short of that, what you're going to get inside of Light Street Crude is a confirmed TD9 count bottom. Well, unless it closes above, 78.28. But even if it does that, you would still have a buy the D point bottom. So on a daily time frame, Light Street Crude is generating a bottom signal today. Price to regain the bottom of its profile. So its next target area is going to be that oscillator and change line. And that's at 78.01. I'd say 78.01 to 78.53. And that's where you start to get into the sell zone. And the sell zone is between 78.53 and 79.59. Um, I'm sorry, 79.78. That doesn't, I'm not saying to sell lights we crude. I'm telling that you're going to run into some major turbulence. And as you're, as you're a pilot out here, what I would be telling you is to just simply uh, fasten the seatbelts. Now, has lights we crude finished its rally for the uh, morning? And I'd have to say the answer to that is leaning towards, is leaning towards yes. The two hour charts turns out. If we take a look at we looked at we opened up our show, take a look at the two hour charts for the ES, the YM, the NQ, and the Russell 2000 out there. And we took a look at those topping signals. If we look at Light Sweet Crude, it's following right along. It's going to go ahead and complete its TD9 count top for its uh, two hour time frame as we come into the uh, 12 o'clock session out there. And it's done that at the TD9 count breakdown resistance level. This suggests to us that we should see some type of retracement inside of Light Sweet Crude, which would perhaps take us back to 76 dollars and change out there and that 30 minute time frame chart would really be the one to confirm whether that's going to happen or not why because it completed a td9 count top at nine o'clock this morning if lights recruit closes above 77.58 that pattern gets negated really i'd say a close above 77.65 since that's a two hour td9 count breakdown level if we get a close above that then what we're looking at john is a further rally but right now it looks like the rally is going to um, is going to slow down and probably wait until we see what takes place at uh, two o'clock. So I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for, Ron, inside the Tigers Den. And I do like your last name, Ron, because it's the one sport that I still do that I enjoy a lot. In fact, enjoy watching. And I've been sick as a dog out here, but I have been able to at least catch some decent 
um, sports in between, you know, keeping my eyes open when that's possible out there. And it still is, it still amazes me. I was watching the ladies row a couple of days ago, and they're turning in times. It's a 2,000 meter row. That's that's the row that everybody does. Um, they were turning in times like 7:31. I, I, I don't think I've ever broken eight. I think maybe eight, 15 or so is probably the max that I've been able to do. I look forward to getting back on a rower out there, but no time soon. Yesterday, as a doctor was having me breathe in and out, deep breaths because they were checking for potential pneumonia out there, they had to actually stop because they could hear that I it was, I was struggling so much to breathe out there that I broke out in a sweat just from doing deep breaths out there. In any event, you don't really care about that. What you care about, what you asked about was natural gas. So we take a look at natural gas. Yesterday inside of natural gas, it generated a key reversal bar. Let me open up the daily time frame, and I'm referring to the daily chart out here. It opened up a key, it generated a key reversal bar. Now a key reversal bar requires three things. One, you've gotta be in a stretch condition. Well, look, we're in a stretch condition. You can see that move lower, let alone you had a road's momentum indicator signal that's triggered. Number two, you've got to close. You've got to trade below and above the prior day's low and high. You've got to trade below the prior day's low, trade above the higher the prior day's high, and then the very third thing you've got to do is one tick in the opposite direction of the trend. Well, we did that. You can just take a look at the, uh, at, the at the bar yesterday, the green bar versus the open versus the close out there. So you do have a confirmed bottom on the daily time frame. What we don't know is whether price can break through any of these resistance levels. If you look at the daily time frame for natural gas, we saw one close, one day's close above profile resistance July 22nd. Otherwise, and then it got right back down below at the very next day, telling us that that was a false move to the upside out there. And we haven't seen close above the top of the daily profile. So in order to confirm some type of bottom inside of uh, natural gas, Ron, You've got to see two close above 2.209. And then if you get that, prepare for your next battle, which would be a 245. So the daily time frame absolutely has a bottom. Does the weekly? It does not. Does the monthly? It does not out there. So, um, but you got, you know, the one nice thing you do have after getting to the highs out here, those highs at about to four o'clock in the morning, well, when, when the two hour chart, formed a, a TD9 count top, is price pulled back in a tested breakout support. And that breakout support was a 2.037. So we really should see a further rally from here with those rallies taking on 214 and 220 out there. So Ron, hope that uh, helps answer your question with regard to what natural gas is doing. Uh, Jack wanted to take a look at high grade copper. So let's go take a look at th those charts out there. And on its daily time frame, it has a Remember if it's got a TD9 count bottom. It's got a wave seven bottom. No, it doesn't have that either. It has a TD9 count bottom. So if you take a look at the low from July 24th, that low has held. It's been tested a few times. So that uh, high grade copper has a TD9 count bottom with price trading with inside its profile. If price can close above its oscillator and change line, that's at 417. Well, you should see Jack as a rally up towards profile resistance, and that would be at $4.30 out there. If price can close above 430 for two consecutive sessions, then you would see a move or should see a move up to 462 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the daily uh, contract for a high grade. Uh, what I see on the weekly is that it wants to trade lower out there. So if, if the weekly chart a to B equals CD pattern you and I are looking at is going to come to fruition. You will not see a close inside of high grade copper or you should not see a close above $4.30. That really should be the end of any type of a counter trend move out there. Intraday, I'm not seeing a whole lot. The two hour chart looks very bullish because it negated a TD9 count top. And that suggests that we should see a further rally out there. Um, yeah, so that's about it. That's what I've got when I take a look at natural gas. Hope that uh, helps you out. The last request that we've got in so far is from GTE, and he would like to take a look at the EEM, uh, the Emerging Markets ETF out there. Where did Stevie put that? Here we go. So now we take a look at the uh, Emerging Markets ETF, EEM. What do we see out here? <laughs> well... Let me tell you what I see on the monthly time frame. Monthly time frame, if it closes the day above 42.79, it uh, suggests a further rally, but it's going to be bar number eight of a TD9 count. The monthly could form a TD9 count top between basically today and two months out. 
on a weekly basis. Roads meant to indicator top, a price found support and it's a uh, profile support at 4206. So the move to the downside could be over. If it is over, you'll see it close about 4335. In the daily time frame, I don't have a really good read on that other than to give you profile support at 4280 and profile resistance up at 4321. Okay. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, up, folks. Let's take a look at Amazon out here. This is for S&P inside the Tiger's Den. So when we take a look at Amazon, what do we have out here? So I don't have on a daily basis an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside uh, that is completed. If anything, um, you know, maybe there's one that's underway. The B point out here or the C point would be the high from July 23rd. So what I see out here with regard to Amazon on the daily time from S&P is a uh, is price trading with inside profile that has resistance at 188.17. So that's the area that you would watch to the upside. Even though I don't have a bottom pattern, it doesn't mean that it hasn't bottomed. It just means I don't have a bottom pattern. But if price did close above 188.17 for two consecutive sessions, then you'd have a profile change in trend. And we'd be looking at a move up towards 200.27. The weekly time frame does have a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price did pull back to support, which was the bottom of his profile, 179.34. Tested and rejected last week. Tested and rejected this week. It's a bullish structured profile. So if on Friday you see a price close above 184.80, we're likely going to go target the uh, 194 and change level, and then above that 201.20. Finally, if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, this will confirm bar number eight of a TD9 count pattern. Bar number eight can be the top. 
but so can bar number nine and so can the bar following bar number nine. So this, in this case here, we might not be seeing a top inside of Amazon, might not be seeing a top until the September timeframe. So the weekly top is held support. We should rally from here. That's what we're seeing that's taking place on the daily time frame. And the question is, can price take out 188.17? I don't know the answer to that question, but I do know if it does, where price is headed to, and that would be to higher ground out there. So S&P, thank you for your request. Let's finish off the day, take a look at those, see if I still have those charts up. The 120 minute time frame charts. Oh, shoot. Let me get them up again here. Again, we'll go ahead and populate that. These are what I believe are the most important charts for you to watch today. I really, I realize that you'd like something more intraday, but I believe you will get the message of the markets, what their intentions are, based upon these two-hour time frame charts. And that is, as we come into 2 o'clock, we're going to be in the bar following bar number 9 for the two-hour charts for the ES Mini and the NQ out there. Folks, thanks for joining me today. Have a, a wonderful Wednesday, and I'll look forward to speaking with you again on Terrific Thursday. Take care and be safe out there.